So I've done two videos or shorts that have gotten a little bit of hate, right? Wes Watson, obviously. And then the Whitakers. Betty! Okay, Look at That's bad. Now when it comes to the Whitakers, here's pretty much how it all played out. Not gonna leave anything out. Not gonna try and make myself look better. I see Mark Leda and I see Tyler Oliveira. They're going after each other. And in the middle of all of that, you have me and you have Big Weeby. This is how it all played out. That's right. This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Profile Stories. Let's get it. So last year, I went on a road trip where I interviewed and went to visit the most interesting people in America. These are people that you can't get to. Pee Wee, the Whitakers, BA, BMF. These are unicorns, basically. I call up my friend, lives in West Virginia, Big Weavy. He also has a channel. Check him out. I go to Big Weavy's, and he's always been talking about how the Whitakers live down the road. He promised he could get me to them. Now, I'm not gonna lie, in my eyes, it was a money grab. Let me go see the Whitakers, film some, be over there, make a million dollars, be Mark Leda. We set off to do that. We went to Odd, Weavy got us in on the Whitakers property, talking to the Whitakers. I took my brother, you know, we took all the pictures and video, and right when we come down the driveway, a red truck passes us by. That red truck, Larry Whitaker. Now Larry, he has all of his faculties. He is, for all intents and purposes, the patriarch of the family, and he has a lot to do with their finances. Beyond that, Larry seems to be the guy that makes sure that the family's protected. Nobody's just showing up. They've had this problem. People just show up. They steal things off their porch. They've stolen trash off the Whitaker's porch. So we pull up, and in my mind, I want to see what Mark has done for this family when it comes to their living conditions because at that point he's the only one who's been around them and he's made videos and had like 40 million views through them. So we pull up, Weavy gets out, Kenneth comes running down the porch up on him, Weavy reintroduces himself, Ray Ray comes over, I give him a bag of chips, a soda, and we're in. We get out, we talk, we talk with Betty, we get to know her. Ray Ray shows us around, shows us the chickens. I'm looking at the house. At this point, I'm thinking in my head, well, Mark has raised like $35,000, $40,000 in the GoFundMe, and there's $6,000 worth of siding put on the roof and the side, corrugated metal. What happened to the rest of the money? Had I known then what I know now, I never would have questioned anything. But then, that's what was on my mind. We're talking to the family. They're saying, no, they didn't sign any disclosures, which I don't know how you would do something like that to where nobody else could come talk to you unless you were like on contract with the television series or something like that right a movie you had signed a non-disclosure so we're talking we take pictures they have this big huge boulders and it's split in half and you have to run and you have to jump it's like i don't know four or five feet in between so i make the first jump take pictures up on the boulder ray ray's tripping down there he's having a good time watching us my little brother does the same thing. We're having a fun time. We're also recording the entire time. That's when Timmy Whitaker comes out. Now, Timmy is nonverbal, but he is smart. He's not without capability. The, the guy is, he's bougie. He crosses his leg and he enjoys and soaks in the nature. He eats as if he's royal. When I look over at Timmy, he's soaking in nature. He's eating his cup of noodles and he's just, he's getting a feeling I probably never had in my life. He's at peace. I go and I sit with Timmy and we talk and Timmy's dog's there. That's when I turned the cameras off. That's when I felt like, what am I doing? I'm trying to exploit poor people. When we're talking to Betty, Betty says that there's no food in the refrigerator. I said, well, I'll go get you something. What do you guys need? She says, maybe a pound of bologna and a loaf of bread. Now there's four that live in that main house. Pound of bologna and a loaf of bread will last maybe a day. At the max, two. 
I said, okay, I'll be right back. We go to the store, the nearest place where you can get groceries, which is the Dollar General or something. I have $700 to my name. That's my life, $700. I'm trying to get clear across the country on $700. And here I am. These people need it more than I do. And I don't even know how that's possible, but it is. I spend nearly half of the money that I had. I bought their dogs food. I bought them food, all types of different meats. We filled the cart and did everything. I left myself hurting. That made me even more mad at Mark Leda. I said, man, this dude's made probably a million dollars off of these people. I have $700 to my name and I'm trying to get across the country and I'm about to spend half of it right now because these people need it. It was shitty. So we do that and Ray Ray likes my hat and it was one of my sponsor's hats from FTW and FYT. And I gave him my hat and he's eating a sandwich and we come back from being out looking at the, the property and that's where you get the short that I made where I come onto the porch and Ray Ray's eating and shakes my hand with his mayonnaise sandwich. Hand, mayonnaise all over his hand. And that's all I put out was just that one short because I didn't want to exploit this poor family. That's when my brother, Big Weeby and I started thinking. We said, we'll put a channel together for you that you own. We have no control over whatsoever. The money will go to your bank account. And then we start thinking about whose bank account that money's gonna go into. Now, Larry, we already are uneasy with him. We're not sure that he has the family's best interest at heart. That would leave Kenneth and Betty. Kenneth, I'm just gonna say, gave myself and Weeby the feeling that he might run off with the money. So we were gonna set it up in Betty's name. The money will go to Betty's bank account. Now mind you, they don't have internet service. They don't have anything out there. They don't have cell phone service. Anything that they would record, my brother and Weeby were gonna come down once a week, edit up the videos, put them up to drop on different days. And that would be a one or two day process. And it would be done on their phones where they could a day in the life of the Whitakers and that money would go to them and them alone. We left there with a different feeling than when we got there. I felt like shit. I felt like an asshole and I was. Weavy then calls me and says, we got this friend BMF. He makes and builds decks. Their front porch needs rebuilding. Weavy then calls the lumber yard, secures the wood and is set. We're gonna fly BMF and his son out me and my brother, Weavy, we're going to build the front porch for him. But we weren't and aren't going to do it on camera. So I'm holding back. I'm not going after Mark Leda. I don't want to get myself into a train wreck. Months go by, maybe a month. Tyler Oliveira calls. He gets a hold of me through emails. We give each other our phone numbers. We get in touch. Tyler wants to do something at the Whitakers. Of course he does. I bring Big Weavy into the fold. Then it becomes a three-way conversation between myself, Weeby, and Tyler Oliveira on the negotiations of getting him near the Whitakers. You see, in our eyes, Mark Leda is what's bad. And seeing what we perceived Mark Leda is doing, well, we didn't want another big-time rich person to come do the same thing. During these talks, I talked to Tyler about the GoFundMe and how I couldn't understand why the property next door, which is a beautiful property, is up for sale and they're living in squalor with nothing to eat. And Mark is fine. I broke down what I saw on the Whitaker's property about their house still being in shambles, their refrigerator being empty, and them being in need. At this time, it looked to me like Mark Leda was profiting off of it all, giving them the absolute bare minimum and pocketing the rest. We tell Tyler Oliveira it's going to be ten grand. We were going to keep $1,000 a piece and give $8,000 and put it in Betty's account. That was the price it was going to be to get next to the Whitakers because in our mind, they're going to get something out of it. They're going to. Tyler, for one reason or another, says, nope, I can't. I'm not going to pay you ten grand to see these people. Now, I saw Tyler break down a, a $2 RPM for... Soft white underbellies, videos on the Whitakers. 
I make a $9 RPM. I'm going to figure Mark Leda probably makes a little bit less because he talks about stuff that is not YouTube friendly. So call it, call it two, whatever. We had him at probably five. A $5 RPM and an RPM for people that don't know, that is how much you make per thousand views. So if I have a thousand views, I make $9. Mark had 40 million views at the time on just the Whitakers. Anyway, it goes, we had broken it down to where we know that he had made conservatively a million dollars off the Whitaker videos. That's before taxes, obviously, and trip and travel, all of this, right? So we're looking at Tyler and we're saying, we already know you'll probably make a million dollars off of this, or at least a hundred thousand dollars for sure. We need the Whitakers to get paid out of this. And we obviously are gonna take a thousand bucks a piece for our troubles, whatever. We're poor too. Obviously $750 to me is a lot of money at the time, still is. Tyler finds somebody, slights us, says, oh, I found the only other person I could. No, you found me and Weavy. you just didn't wanna pay up. You didn't want to put money to make more money. You wanted to do it for free, for cheap. You wanted to save your 10 Gs. And then Tyler shows up down there. Now Tyler fills up the cart and feeds them. And I thank you for that, Tyler. I mean, you did exactly what I did, but, but I promise your bank account's better off than mine. But they ate. Then Tyler brings up the GoFundMe, which to be honest, I was happy about. Mark then comes out, he makes a video and he shows. I've been giving these people money out of my own pocket, much less the money that's earmarks for them. When I'm watching Mark's video, I'm sick to my stomach. I was wrong. Mark Leda's not a bad guy. He's actually a really good guy. Now there are text messages from Mark to Weavy telling him, those people aren't poor enough, I need poorer. You see, Weavy was his connect. Weavy's the one who in West Virginia finds him the odd families, the poor people for Mark to make videos on. So we see Mark, he puts out all the receipts, he shows he's been given thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Anytime he's asked by the Whitakers for money, money is sent. I don't know where that money is going. I don't know who is in control of that money. I know that Larry and Kenneth, in my eyes, and I was raised on the streets, I don't trust either one of those gentlemen. They're nice. Kenneth is super nice. I just think when you're that poor and you don't know no better, if a big chunk hits your bank account, you might run off and leave the family high and dry. Now, at no time are we mentioned in either one of those videos, which is good. Nobody needs to be in the middle of a fight over poor people. If you break it down, that's what this is. It's one man saying that another man didn't do enough when that same man did just as much as a guy who has 1% of what he has. Through all of this, I've learned, I've gained a lot of respect for Mark Leda. I gotta say, the man showed the receipts. He came out of his own pocket to help this family. I'd be mad too if I was you, Mark. I would definitely be mad. You went above and beyond and then you got called a cheapskate or a liar or a bamboozler, a hoodwinker. I apologize, Mark Leda. I read you wrong. And Tyler Oliveira, I think you're probably exactly who I think you are. I think you probably live beyond your means. I think you probably jet set, but you rent a jet with your rent money. You probably live a fun life with your friends and you're definitely not gonna give two dudes any time when it comes to giving them money to make a story. You made it happen. You just didn't know everything. That's mine and Weeby's fault. We may have wound up the battery pack in Tyler Oliveira and set him to walking off. These were the concerns that we had though. We didn't publicly say them and we didn't ask Tyler to publicly say them either. That's on Tyler. Now it comes to the Whitakers. Weavy and I sat back and we said, all right, there's four that live in that house that gotta be on disability, it's SSI. Well, four times about $800 a month on average is $3,200 a month. You couple that with the money being sent from Mark Leda. I wish I had that much money every month. <laughs> Those people have more money than I do. I feel like some knew that we were being scammed, that they were actually and good for them. If you're gonna make money off of me, I want my pie. I think Betty is caught up in a game right now. She has no way out of. She wants people to help her and her family. She will 
put her loyalty towards that person, whoever is helping. For Mark to be mad at Betty, I don't believe that that is okay. But that's Mark, it's his feelings. I can't tell him what to feel or think. I think Kenneth is wishy-washy. He's a good guy. Obviously, Timmy is my favorite. Ray Ray, he's different. Ray Ray saw somebody kissing on the TV. We were all outside talking. Ray Ray jumps out, runs off the porch, starts <clears throat> feeding the geese. You know, I always remember Betty yelling at me, Ray Ray, put that thing away. That's Ray Ray. So that's what happened when we went to the Whitakers. There won't be much footage ever of me in and out of the Whitakers' lives because we don't go there for any other reason but to help the Whitakers. I see all the comments, the you're disgusting and you check it out. Miss me with that bull. Nobody gives a f what you think. Just because everybody else is exploiting these people doesn't mean there aren't people in the background that are doing the most for them. At all times, we just don't talk about it. End of the day, there's four Whitakers in that house that always need help. If you're going to give any money towards the Whitakers, find a way to send it to the Whitakers. There's not any need for any middlemanning for people saying, give me the money, I'll give it to them. That sets people up to take from the Whitakers, to profit off of the Whitakers. If you can't find a way, there's a poor family down the street from you, I promise. Give them what you would give the Whitakers. All of them are getting older. I would say in the next five years, none of them will be around, not them four. It's sad, it's sad. When Timmy Whitaker passes, it's going to break my heart. I've grown fond of Betty, even Ray Ray. So that's our part in this whole debacle. We were originally mad at Mark, thought he was cheating, thought he was bamboozling. We tried to get Tyler to make sure that the Whitakers got paid and he's out there doing what he's doing. It's different. Two small time YouTubers are kind of in the middle of a beef that wouldn't have happened if Tyler hadn't gotten a hold of me and made a video projecting my thoughts at that time. It was a good thing though. Mark got to show that he is a really good guy. And for that, I thank you, Mark. Thank you for coming to Vegas Profile Stories. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.